you know what? It's only E-Type Jaguars and Sebastian Coda make me proud to be British these days. So said Boise on everybody's favorite British comedy, Only Fools in Horses. Way, way, way back, series one, episode two. And the car he was admiring while he said it was this one. Not often that a car with such a glorious story and national provenance goes under the hammer. Of course, we all remember a certain black Ford Escort that went through auction in the summer months and made a rather regal price. Although I do hope the alleged new owner doesn't paint it white like the rest of his collection. It'd somewhat defeat the object, wouldn't it? Well, come the end of November, Hampson Auctions are absolutely delighted to be offering such a special car at their November auction. Some of the eagle-eyed amongst you might recognize this from Only Fools and Horses. Obviously, the title of the video did say so, but here it is. The car that Boise bought for his bit on the side in series one, episode two of Britain's most loved comedy series. Of course, it didn't have the happiest time at the close of that episode after Rodney took the cigar box with the couple of soaps, phone numbers on, threw it out the window. Del Boy obviously slammed on, and then guess what? Someone went into the back of them. Who was it? The guy they sold a dodgy Mark III Cortina to. Thankfully, no E-types were harmed in the making of the episode, and here it is, sitting pretty in absolutely delicious condition. A lot of people think Jaguar was born in Coventry, but I'll tell you what, it was actually born in my hometown of Blackpool under the name Swallow Sidecars, which then became SS Motorcars, and you'll all know SS from the Jaguar SS. I kind of feel like if this was a building society advert or something like that, I'd now go into some spoken word, overly colloquial, perhaps with a slowed down dance song from the 80s, but I won't do that. Or perhaps I will, given I have a rather long walk to kill. A long walk I have, and soon it'll be done. So let me take you back to 1961. For the Geneva Motor Show, the team slaved long nights and longer days to create a car so stunning, so pretty, so stylish, the show's goers would stand bewildered and upon it gaze. But it almost wasn't to be. The chaps at Jag were fraught. There was too much to finish. The chances of making this show were naught. With British fighter much, there was slim chance of saying no. Exec Bob Berry raced to the ferry and made it with 20 short minutes to go. Pandemonium ensued, the crowd were in awe, their eyes taking in all the curves that it bore. Enzo Ferrari raised his Campari. It's the most beautiful car I ever saw. The world's elite cried for Jack to take a bow. Frank Sinatra crooned, I want that car, I want it now. Footballers, actors, and music stars did all rejoice, as did a car salesman from Peckham named Terence Aubrey Boyce. Yes, Jaguar it was, and Jag it would be, in the form of this old English white type E. So let us learn more about this cherished E-Type, owned by the man who chose cigar over pipe.
Would you just look at that? What an irresistible aesthetic the E-Type has. Thanks in part to the fact the aerodynamic design was created by a former aircraft engineer. The E-Type's sleek and slippery design not only gave the car a compelling appearance from every angle, but contributed to its ability to top 150 miles an hour, the first production car ever to do so. And it was a feat Jaguar attempted to prove themselves up the M1. They only managed 120 miles an hour, but one owner did hit the magic 150 shortly after taking delivery and after peeking the eye of the plod, we now have a 70 miles an hour speed limit. Thanks for that, you plonker. I can't believe it, Blair. I really can't, mate. This is unreal. We're in an E-Type, a car that I've absolutely lusted over for mm, all my life. And here we are, but not just any E-Type. I'm sat in the same seat that Sir David Jason, Del Boy, sat in in that very episode. And Blair, do you know what? You're sat where Nicholas Lindhurst sat. Rodney, you plonker. Maybe that could be your new nickname, Blair. Maybe not. We'll call Will the plonker after the last video. We won't use that. Or will we? I don't know. <laughs> Have a look. The mileage is boobs. 80,085 miles. So, so cool. And let's not forget, the E-Type has seen many, many boobs over its life. Mmm, can you think of many better ways to spend a sunny Saturday than pointing an E-Type down a country road? 12 cylinders pumping away under the long bonnet, shoving 270-ish horsepower to the rear wheels, independent suspension, cosseting you over the bumps and disc brakes, slowing you ahead of a bracing corner, all in a package that feels so nimble and capable you'll run out of fuel before you want to get out. It's all nice enough today, but in the 60s this was the fastest thing on the road and many of its engineering bits and bobs paved the way for change across the whole automotive industry. I've always called the Series 3 the first of the Jaguars, owing to its Americanization over the previous models, with thanks to new, more stringent safety regulations and Jaguar's desire to keep selling over the pond, the headlights had to be raised, the windscreen more vertical, and the glorious slitty rear lights of the earlier models had to be enlarged and more visible. So, because Mr. Lyons didn't fancy spending £30,000 on retooling, he instead used the rear light units from the Lotus Elan. Not as pretty, but still a cool story. First registered in November 1973, this glorious Series 3 E-Type has lived a pretty cherished life, apart from its brief dalliance as a TV star, of course. The car has had only two owners from new, the first of which had the car for 43 years, and with a mileage that is just 80,000 as well. It's little wonder the condition is so, so delightful. The Series 3 E-Type moved away from the straight six and brought with it a 5.3 litre V12 quad exhaust plus wider arches and the longer wheelbase of the 2 plus 2. But even though the exhaust stack might lead you to think otherwise, this thing is as refined as Sir William Lyons expected of his beloved creation. Such was his mantra, grace, space, pace. Finished in old English white with navy blue leather interior, blue roof, blue carpet. The combination is absolutely sublime. For me, possibly the finest. As you might expect with a car that looked this groovy in the 60s, the rich and famous were all over the E-Type with George Harrison, Old Blue Eyes, Tony Curtis all grabbing one, while Peter Sellers bought one for his wife, Britt Eklund. But it wasn't only the rich and famous that could buy one. Mr. Lyon's insistence that it was keenly priced saw a tag of just £2,800, about 35000 in today's money. With E-Type values soaring and continuing to do so, there couldn't be a better time to buy one, particularly not one with such an incredible story and great televisual history. Now this wouldn't be the star car that it is without a hefty dose of memorabilia, as well as a history file you'd expect from such long and fastidious ownership, including all sorts of manuals, certificates and invoices. This car also comes complete with photographs signed by John Chalice, 
Sir David Jason, and even a Birds at a Bar. Not, by the way, the pair of geezers they'll try to shine up at first. There's also a model E-Type, which is signed by the boys, and even under the boot lid, John Chalice's moniker. Oh, what a shot this is. Three national treasures, all in one. It's a Jaguar E-Type from Only Fools and Horses, owned by Boise. It's going under the hammer at Hampson Auctions on Tuesday the 29th of November, guided between 100 and 120,000 pounds. So do be sure to check out Hampson Auction on all their social media channels. Check the website as well, where you can see the full catalog. It's not just this belter that's going through. They've got a full list of incredible classic cars going on. So for now, we're out of here. We'll see you on the 29th of November. Cheers, Boise. Thank you.